Now, I was recently doing some research uh, for a separate project concerning the New Apostolic Reformation, and I stumbled across a video containing teaching on building apostolic teams. And the teaching came from Alexander Pagani. And as I began watching the video, something was very familiar to me. Uh, it was actually the teaching that he was reading from his laptop. And lo and behold, I found what he was reading and I was following it along in this very book, which he did not write verbatim. There were four videos I came across where he was doing this teaching with his church. And this was a year ago in 2022. Uh, given what I'm going to share with you today, I know that uh, Pagani states that he is anti-NAR. He believes that the New Apostolic Reformation is a heresy. Uh, he does not hold to their beliefs. So he says, do you see the similarities in what Wagner believed versus what Pagani teaches and practices? I'll let you be the judge of that. The second thing the Lord sent me to this city, to this event today, is to bring a prophetic apostolic declaration of a name change over this city. Did you catch what I just said? But God said, I'm going to change the name of this city from the city that never sleeps, from the Big Apple to the city of peace, to the city of the fivefold, the city of the fivefold. I target the three principalities over, over this university. deliverance is done on me. I just had one about a month and a half ago. Apostle came through our house from Trinidad, good friend of Apostle uh, John Eckhart. And I was like, man of God, I need freedom too, man. Help me get free again. And when the Holy Spirit reveals it to me again, I'll get another one. Because I ain't going to hell for nobody. And I'm not going to end up with a reprobate mind. Jerusalem, so while we are here, I want you, those of you that are watching, today is January 25th. Oh, and we are doing this live. This is not pre-recorded. This is live right now. We're going to pray for this beautiful city of Jerusalem. We are on the 11th floor. And in this direction right here, this is where the temple is. This is where the temple is. This is the entry. And we're going to begin to declare and we're going to begin to decree. Why? Very simple. We're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That's pastoral. The pastor prays for peace. Every Christian should pray for the peace of Jerusalem and to begin to pray for the peace of Jerusalem in all facets of both uh, religion, government, finances, relationship, uh, uh, race, geopolitics, whatever. You have to declare the peace of Jerusalem. But when we pray apostolic prayers, apostolic prayer is a different kind of thing. We are going in decreeing governmental, governmental of prayers that are more in decree form. So in a few moments, we are going to decree that spiritual blindness would be broken over Jerusalem. God has put them under a slumber. But within the slumber, there is a remnant that God is saving messianic Jews that are converting to Christ. And we're going to help in that process. We're going to begin to decree. Now you can't strong on God's prophetic words by declarations. What God said in prophecy is going to happen no matter what we say and what we do. But when it comes to the gospel, we can pray because we are adopted sons into this commonwealth of Israel. And that's what we're going to do in a few moments. I'm the Savior, not coming for the first time, but has already come, Lord. So, Father, we decree that the religious spirit will be pushed back against the remnant that can be released. I call forth. We call forth the remnant. We call forth the remnant from the west, from the east, from the north, now in the name of Jesus. And let them hear the call. Let them hear the call of you, Lord Jesus, calling them to embrace Messiah Jesus. Father, we decree it. I decree it. Along with my apostolic friends that are watching who are real apostles, we come in agreement. We come in agreement and decree governmentally that this city of Jerusalem, great deliverance would break forth. Father, break forth deliverance now. Break forth freedom now. Break forth evangelism now. Now, as Shabbat is ending, Lord, now over this great city, Lord, end, end the blindness upon the remnant now. I'm currently seeing another reformation in the church. We are experiencing restoration today, right? All right. God is restoring the ministries of the apostle and prophet within the local church. Now, the author quoted from this book is John Eckhart. He goes by the title Apostle John Eckhart. And we're going to look at some of this in just a few minutes. But this was from his book, A Shift in Leadership. This is the cover that you're going to see right here. This is the current cover of it. 
And this book tells you about the shift from the pastoral to the apostolic. This is the very same book that Pagani is reading in sections to his congregation. Leaders cannot afford to be ignorant of this restoration move of the Holy Spirit. Leaders must come into the knowledge of the current shift in the church. There is an apostolic mandate for many senior pastors. And unless, unless these leaders come into the knowledge of this change, many will remain locked in a pastoral mode for the rest of their lives. This will drain them of their joy, zeal, and vitality. All right, well, An on. apostolic team is a group of five-fold ministers led by an apostle that can come into a region or a church and build apostolically. The team comes to add to the church. They do not come to duplicate what the local leadership has already done. They help the church break into new realms of spiritual power and revelation. You know, we just are the fivefold help create new wineskin. And old wineskins cannot handle this expansion. Old wineskins are rigid and inflexible. Organizations and churches often become legalistic and dogmatic. It is either their way or no way. When this happens, God raises up fivefold leadership, which brings a fresh word to help create new wineskin. And these anointings. Why does this matter? Well, I'm going to show you some things right now that are going to help you understand why this matters. Now, in Bill Hammond's book, The Eternal Church, as you see the, the title cover here, in his uh, summary of the prophetic apostolic movement in that chapter regarding this subject, he says, quote, the purpose of the prophetic apostolic movement was to restore the ministries of prophets and apostles to complete Christ's original five gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher to his church. The restoration and activation of these five ministry gifts was for fulfilling the purpose for which they were given the equipping and perfecting of the saints in Christ's image and ministry. Prophets and apostles are preparing the saints for their full day of manifesting the kingdom of God for a witness to every nation. John Eckhart and C. Peter Wagner were prominent in pioneering and propagating the apostolic movement. After the restoration of apostles began to be propagated, many apostles began coming forth throughout the United States and many nations of the world. I think it's important to note here that when they say restoration, the question needs to be asked, what type of apostles are you trying to restore? And it would seem that it's the apostles of Christ uh, that's been republished as of 2017 called Moving in the Apostolic. It's a very well-known book by those that have been in this movement, uh, even if they don't acknowledge the New Apostolic Reformation. Uh, Eckhart's book actually acknowledges the New Apostolic Reformation in chapter 8. In fact, chapter 8 is titled The Apostolic Church citing Matthew 16, 18. And, and Eckhart says this in his book. Some of the greatest churches the world has ever known are now on the earth. Apostolic churches and networks are developing around the world as God is positioning his church to fulfill the Great Commission. Dr. C. Peter Wagner calls this movement a new apostolic reformation. It is a movement that ultimately will affect everyone within the church. The challenge to each of us is this. Will we fight against and reject the movement? Or, we will, or will we support it and flow with it? I believe that the more we understand about the apostolic dimension, the more we will want to become a part of this great move of God. So it seems that, that Eckhart is affirming that this great move of God, the new apostolic reformation, is something that the church needs to be part of in order for the great commission to go forth. Now he has C. Peter Wagner actually has been quoted as saying this about that very book. My good friend John Eckhart has both the gift of apostle and teacher. I shall make his book, Moving in the Apostolic, required reading of my students, so they might get to know him and say, John Eckhart is my role model for ministry today. So yes. Wagner himself endorsed this book. In fact, he wanted his students to have it as primary reading material in order to understand the apostolic movement, which Wagner um, referred to as the New Apostolic Reformation. So Eckhart believes himself to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, a big A apostle. And and Wagner even, uh, when he did the foreword uh, in, in his book, he even made a big deal about that, saying that he is unapologetic about calling himself Apostle John Eckhart, which is a big A. He, Wagner believed that that was a good thing because he acknowledged the restoration of governing authority apostles and prophets. And again, I ask, what type of apostles are you trying to restore if you think they need restoration? Now, I know there's. I want to get back to Pagani for just a minute on this. 
because he is integral in this in what he's teaching because he's teaching new apostolic reformation teaching beliefs practices doctrine he's teaching it from john eckhart that's been proven from these clips that have not been doctored and you can find these videos for yourself unless he takes them offline but he's teaching straight out of john eckhart's books who is affiliated with the new apostolic reformation i have pagan actually i have both of pagani's books i have the secrets to deliverance that i've read and I'm getting ready to read The Secrets to Generational Curses. And I have a question because I noticed on the bio a statement that was very interesting. In Pagani's bio, later on down as he talks about some of his, uh, the, his experiences, and he says near the end, he carries a spirit of wisdom and discernment to unlock secrets of the kingdom with signs and wonders following his ministry. Now, when I read that, I immediately thought of 2 Corinthians 12, 12, because Paul uses those very same words uh, to, to describe to the Corinthian church that they saw a true apostle, Paul, compared to the super apostles or the false apostles in 2 Corinthians 11. So I wanted they to saw- ask that question. If he doesn't see himself as an apostle of Christ, why is he inserting a statement that is very close to what Paul said about the apostles of Christ and how they were affirmed by by people that they came in contact with that they were truly from jesus christ pagani uses the same terminology and he exhibits the same practices as we've seen found in this movement he's he's demonstrating territorial spiritual warfare which many of us are familiar with he's demonstrating the declarations the decrees he's calling himself an apostle he's citing material that is coming from someone who believes himself to have governing authority as an apostle and he used and he's using that as a teaching to transition his uh, church from pastoral to apostolic there are several things that he's engaging in that are concerning because this is affirming the new apostolic reformation and more than just a mere church planter so i want to ask this is it possible that he's not aware of this information it's possible I want to give the benefit of the doubt, but I also um, realize that there are people that know that they're part of this and they proudly display it. But I, I hope that this video will serve to provide this information to Mr. Pagani and to have him consider these things in addition to those that he's ministering to. So if a foundation needs to be relayed, according to John Eckhart, then another building is being established which would not be the church of Jesus Christ. And no new foundation is necessary. What God, what God began through his apostles and prophets in the early church is a sufficient foundation with Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. The first foundation was sufficient and it still is. We're still under apostolic teaching today. The mystery of the gospel has been revealed and we can find this in scripture. So I appreciate you joining me today. And I know it's been a little bit different with this video, but I wanted to present these things so you could see them for yourselves rather than just tell you about them. And And I want to give this appeal to Alexander Pagani and to those listening that hold to this teaching. I want you to give serious thought to what I've just shared with you because I share it out of concern for him and for those who are in this movement and following this teaching. The practices and teachings are clearly aligned with the new apostolic reformation. And this is a dangerous movement. It is, and most assuredly, it is a real movement in spite of what some people may say, including well-respected people and leaders who want to, um, for lack of a better word, they want to protect their friends, Most, but it is a real movement. And there are many people that are getting damaged, spiritually abused in this movement. They're being taught false teaching, aberrant teaching. They're being led astray. They're not hearing the gospel. And we need to return back to the word of God in the true proper context. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you want to share it, feel free until next time. When we look at another topic together, be blessed today by the truth of God's word. Thanks for joining me on this podcast. If you would like to connect with me, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. You can also email me at dawn at lovesubscribe.com. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I hope you'll consider leaving a five-star review and that you'll even share it with others who may benefit from the information provided. 
If you also like reading, you can subscribe to my blog at lovesickscribe.com, where I release weekly blogs that correlate with the podcast episodes. I've enjoyed our time together today, and I look forward to our next time together as we dive into biblical truths, current topics, and where we grow in loving the Word and loving the one who is the Word, Jesus Christ.